The Greens now have their first Brisbane City Councillor and first ever representative in Queensland local politics. Jonathan Sree narrowly won the GAB award over Labor's Nicole Lessio. She conceded defeat this afternoon after four days of vote counting. living off rainwater, solar power for most of our power needs. We're composting our own poo in a compost toilet. We're living like a really compact life. My name is Jonathan Sri Ranganathan. I'm the local city councillor for the Gabba Ward of Brisbane City Council. The fundamental point here is that we should not be spending billions and billions of dollars demolishing and rebuilding stadiums at a time when so many people are sleeping on the street, at a time when so many people are just struggling to get by. At the very least, ordinary residents should have a say in how public funds are used and how their neighbourhoods change and evolve. Councillors, I will now put the motion. Those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. No. So I grew up in West Chermside, went to public school, kind of in some ways fairly stereotypical suburban Brisbane childhood. I think I was a bit of a nerd, like to be blunt I was, yeah, pretty geeky. I wasn't so interested in like party politics and mainstream political stuff, I was more interested in like activism and social change movements. Like my early 20s, West End was a pretty sick place to be living. Like rent was reasonably cheap, lots of time for music and art. And... Gradually the rent started to rise and some of the rent increases were quite steep and I could see like the next wave of gentrification coming through the suburb. It's really important to be like organising these movements and marching in the street and that sort of stuff. But it would also help to have a few more radical voices. And he runs around on every issue. You know, he, he is the antithesis of a traditional politicians. For a long time, the sort of narrative has been like, oh, councils aren't important. They just like collect the bins and repair potholes and stuff. It doesn't really matter, but it shapes like how we live and where we live. And at a deeper level, local councils can have a really big impact on like the culture of a city or a community. I think there were a few different motivations for me to run, being like on the receiving end of a bit of racism growing up, some of the experiences in remote Aboriginal communities where my mum was working as a teacher and I guess seeing that also made me a bit more conscious of like, damn, this political system really isn't working very well. Challenge that, but we need to give voice to it and we need to be angry and we need to stand up to these systems of oppression because the system is failing, is failing Aboriginal children on a systemic level and, and something that makes them feel My dad was a Tamil from Sri Lanka. I don't speak Tamil very well. I don't really like feel Tamil or consider myself like Tamil in that sense. White Australians growing up were often saying, oh, well, where are you from? You mustn't be from here. I'm like, well, no, I'm born in Brisbane. I like haven't really lived anywhere else. This is my home. 
seeing myself as local to this place, but other people didn't see me that way. And so it was kind of a bit destabilizing. My parents were like really keen and to support me to sort of fit into Australian culture. Hey everyone. So as explained in the long write up, I'm changing my last name to my father's full last name, which is Sri Ranganathan. My father's full name is Sri Ranganathan, but my last name was just shortened on my birth certificate to, to, to Sri. Maybe protect me from some of the more oppressive elements of Australian racism. Lately, after sort of thinking about it for ages and chatting to my parents, I decided I'd make that change so to take on my father's full name. Services removes an Aboriginal boy from their parents. We're never going to be able to know for sure whether that decision was motivated partly by racial prejudice. But when we look at the nationwide statistics and see that even today in Australia, Aboriginal children are eight times more likely to be removed from their parents than non-Indigenous children, it's clear that on some level, our economic, legal and political systems are oppressing Aboriginal families. I'm really cynical of career politicians. Even, you know, within the Greens, there are some people who've just held a particular role for years and years and years. I think at some point that person might be getting too comfortable and it would be better for them to step aside and let someone else have a go for a while. I probably won't run to represent the Gabba Ward again in 2024. I do still want to put a lot of energy in supporting the Greens to become a more dominant force on Brisbane City Council and to put I guess a bit more pressure on the major parties. It all just depends on where the world's going, right? And, and where I'm most needed. I think really it's not, it's not so much a question of exactly what the best pathway is to, to get involved, because they all have merit. The point is do something, right? Like we're in a moment of crisis, we're in a moment of potential revolution. So it's like time to get off your ass and step up and get active. <laughs> oh man, I'm, my heart beats racing. This yeah. is great, <laughs> great chat. Thank you very much.